special. I guess they call it the 12:35 uh, local start. Carlos Zambrano heading into the dugout and hoping his offense can give him the same support Ryan Dempster got last night. Seven runs in the first inning. Let's look in on the Cubs Southwest starting lineup. Coast case starts it in center. Terrio at short. Derek Lee at an even 300. Four homers on the trip. Michael Hoffpower cleaning up in right. Jeff Baker again in there for Ramirez at third. Fontenot at second. Bobby Scales continues to get the starts in left. Coy Hill with a good start to the uh, month. And Carlos Zambrano at a robust 232 batting night. Well, let's take a look at the Pirates defensively today. Moss, McCutcheon, and Jones across the outfield. McCutcheon and Jones, both Rookie of the Year candidates, will probably get some votes, especially Jones over in right field. Walker and Cedeno on the left side of the infield. Delwin Young and Steve Pierce on the right side. Jason Jaramillo doing the catching today for right-hander, former Cub, Kevin Hart. See the numbers uh, combined with the Cubs and the Pirates this season. Kevin Hart was much better as a member of the Cubs, and he's been over here pitching for the Buccos. Sinker, a cutter, a slider, change up, occasional curveball. We mentioned at the open of the show he's had problems repeating his delivery, and when uh, that happens, he has trouble finding the strike zone. Rob Drake will call the balls and strikes with Andy Fletcher, Greg Gibson, and the crew chief Tim McClelland. On the bases. The Cubs took the opener four to two and then won last night nine to four. Scored seven of those nine runs in the first inning. Twenty six year old right hander Kevin Hart dealing and Fukudome greeting him with a base hit out into left center makes a big turn but he's going to hold with a single. Here we go again. Fukudome picking on that first pitch sinker up and out over the plate stays right on it back up the middle of the field first hit of the ball game. Terrio takes a pitch a little bit off the plate inside on a fastball in the mid 90s ball one Ryan with 149 career RBIs Milton Bradley reached a milestone last night scoring his 500th career run he left with some minor tightness in his legs and getting today off the Cubs will be off tomorrow and then the day game on Friday against the Cincinnati Reds. The 1 0 inside on a sinker, riding in on that right handed hitter. 2 and 0, and the biggest problem for Kevin as a Cub was uh, command of the strike zone. But his numbers were pretty good. He was 3 and 1 with a 2.60 ERA with the Cubs. It has not gone that well with the Pirates. 3 and 0. You know, and we talked a little bit about Ronnie Cedeno in the ball game last night and how this is a great opportunity for Cedeno to come over here to the Pirates, a very young ball club, an opportunity to reestablish himself as an everyday player. And the same could be said for Kevin Hart. I mean, look at that Cubs starting rotation. There didn't figure to be any openings for Kevin. He did start four games for the Cubs earlier this season, but. Coming over here with the young Pirates ball club uh, trying to rebuild not only the entire roster but their pitching staff and he's got a great chance to prove that he belongs as a starter here for the Pirates next year. Koske takes off and Terrio gets it foul out of play. It's a similar sort of play we saw I believe in New York. Koske was gunned down. Terrio took a 3 1 pitch. Yeah, it's really on the hitter on that 3 1 count to protect the base runner. And by that I mean if the ball's in the strike zone, you're obligated to swing at it because your teammates on the move on the bases. If it's out of the strike zone, obviously you take it for ball four and head on down to first base. 
Ryan had a little bit of a brain cramp in New York, however, took a fastball right down the middle of the plate for strike two, and Kosuke was called out. Neil Walker will have to throw the first as Fukudome was running yet again on the 3 2, so that's the first out. to do it with a hitter like Ryan Terrio, a guy that's adept at putting the ball on the ground, get that runner in motion, stay out of the double play, perhaps not as likely to do it with a guy like Derek Lee at the plate. You would rather have him pick a 3-1 pitch that he wants to swing at rather than force him to swing at any strike. It brings up Derek Lee, four homers on this trip, seven for 15. And in an RBI spot with Fukudome in scoring position. Swing and a miss. Went after the breaking ball and couldn't get it. As a starter, you'll see more breaking pitches from Kevin Hart. We may see him throw some straight change ups. As a reliever with the Cubs, he was basically a, a two trick pony. He threw a hard sinker, a hard cutter. And as a relief pitcher, that's basically all he needed to do. Short stints coming in for one inning, maybe one inning plus at a time. And he was able to be fairly effective in that role because uh, those two pitches are his bread and butter pitches. Two good breaking balls to start this sequence against a guy in a very hot streak. Big leg kick. And Derek wanted to go after that one, but fortunately held up just in time. Now, sometimes knowing an opposing pitcher's tendencies uh, works against you. Uh, as I just said, Kevin Hart, as a member of the Cubs, was basically sinker cutter. And here to Derek Lee, he's shown him three sliders in a row. And Derek barely able to check on the 0 2 pitch. So they might go with a high fastball. Yep. Whenever you see the catcher come up out of his crouch, it's about a hundred percent chance it's going to be a fastball. Yeah, that's not a location you want to throw a change up or a breaking ball. You see Harmio getting up high off his haunches back there. And Kevin Gray goes even a little higher than the target. And a bouncer foul, still two and two to Lee. This telecast is presented in beautiful high definition, brought to you by Comcast. Great shot of downtown Pittsburgh in HD across the Allegheny River. Turned into a really nice day. Some rain very early this morning, but 72 degrees, a little bit of sun. And another breaking ball, three and two. Well, it's funny to see in the middle of an at bat how a veteran hitter like Derek Lee adjusts. If Kevin Hart threw that same pitch on the first or second offering, Derek would have missed it because he did. Starting to get locked in. 3 2 is inside. He takes the walk. So Hart got ahead 0 2 and couldn't put him away. Looking at it from the Pirates' point of view, that's not the worst thing that could have happened right there with the base open and Derek Lee at the plate. But once you jump ahead in the count 0 and 2, you want to go ahead and try to put that hitter away as best you can. But Hart just couldn't find that same breaking ball that he threw the first two pitches to Derek. Now a couple of former Cub and Iowa Cub teammates, Kevin Hart and Michael Hoffpower. Is out in front of a fastball, pulled it foul. He had a home run last night. Didn't start. Still ended up getting three at bats as he came in for Bradley in the bottom of the first.
Change up away that time from Kevin Hart after Michael Hoppauer pulled the first 92 mile an hour fastball foul down the first baseline. And for guys that are guess hitters, uh, that would have been a good situation for Micah to guess off speed. If you pull a guy's best fastball foul to your pull field, yeah, you can bet you're going to get some kind of off speed pitch on the next delivery. Good curveball, one and two to count on Hawk Power. Leadoff single by Fukudome. Terrio grounded out, and then Derek Lee walked. Again on a heater at 96 that time. Once again, if you're a guess hitter, to believe that possibly he's going to see another off speed pitch away here. He's pulled a couple of good fastballs foul down that first baseline, which indicates he's on that heater. But as you always say, well, you get the two strikes, just have to battle. Yeah, shouldn't be guessing too much. He gets the breaking ball, and that one's just foul. Each pitch pulled down that first baseline. McCutcheon out in center field. First, he moved one step over toward right center, then a couple more steps over toward right center. If this at bat goes much longer, they'll have two right fielders. Catcher Harris Meal and the pitch in the dirt. And Jason Armio does a real nice job locking pitches in the dirt. He's had plenty of practice with this Pirates pitching staff this year, but uh, he saves a lot of bases for his pitching staff. Good form, squares that ball up right in the middle of the chest protector, and then the second part of it is recover, block and recover. Sets up a 2 2 to Hawk Power. Almost caught his jersey on a fastball inside 3 2. We'll see how aggressive the Cubs want to be. Hawk Power is a strikeout candidate. Cubs would like to stay out of that double play. Maybe they'll be aggressive here in the opening inning. Try to push some buttons. They are not running, and it's just off the inside corner to load the bases for Red Hot Jeff Baker. Well, I mentioned the story about Michael Hawkpower. His dad called him after Micah returned to the major leagues and took a walk in his first plate appearance as a pinch hitter and his dad said earlier this year you would have struck out. I kind of feel that way about that last at bat. That was a nice job of uh, really waiting him out by Micah. He got a couple of aggressive swings early in the count and then once it got to two strikes he narrowed his zone down a little bit. Had to be a little more discerning a little more under control with his swing and ended up taking the base on balls. I think the other adjustment for Micah, not only adjusting to becoming a pinch hitter, but then when he gets a start, not feeling like every at bat is the end of the world. And while they're all important at bats, and meanwhile, 2 0 on Baker, well, there's a rhythm to it, Bob, isn't there? I mean, you have one pinch hit plate appearance, it's usually in a pretty high pressured situation, but you're kind of not only trying to do damage in your first at bat, but you're setting up the pitcher for later at bats. No question about it. You want to see as many pitches as you can in that first at bat of the ball game, depending on the game situation, so that you can use that knowledge in later at bats. Maybe when you come up there with a couple guys in scoring position in a tie ball game, and now you know everything that opposing pitcher is throwing. Call strike. That's one of the things that uh, will drive some hitting coaches crazy. When you're facing a pitcher you've never faced before, you've never seen him before, and you swing at the first pitch of the ball game and ground out weakly. Now your second at bat of the ball game, it's the same thing. You still don't know what he's throwing out there. You still don't have a good idea of his release point, the rhythm of his delivery. Now we're 
regardless of what transpires the rest of this top of the first, the Cubs have really done a nice job in doing exactly that. Facing Kevin Hart for the first time, even though they're pretty familiar with him. That will get just out of play. Looks like another partial sellout here at PNC Park today. You mentioned the business person special, the 12:35 start. I think there must be a fat business person stuck in the turnstile. <laughs> the friends and family plan today. Two-two and a pop fly out in the center field. Should be deep enough to get Fukudome in. McCutcheon makes a catch. And into the plate, and late as it bounced away from Jaramillo. McCutcheon kind of acted like he wasn't going to fire one home. He has eight assists and made it fairly close, but it'll be a sack fly for Baker, and it's one to nothing. It was closer than it appeared it was going to be. McCutcheon got rid of that ball quickly. Kind of surprised the other runners didn't advance as well. That throw was way over the cutoff man's head. No opportunity for Pierce to cut that ball, but Derek Lee and Michael Hoffpower hold their bases there. McCutcheon kind of acted as if he might worry instead about Lee or, or Baker, but he did make a nice throw to the plate. But as you talk about all the time, uh, there are times, and that would be one of them, where McCutcheon probably should have realized he did not have much of a play. Up the middle, and they get the out at second base. So Fontenot grounds into the fielder's choice. The Cubs get one. They really made Kevin Hart work in the first inning. The uh, Pirates are coming up. That young Cub fan wants a sweep today. at the ballpark. Now the Pirates Southwest starting line of McCutcheon, Young, Jones at the top. Moss, Pierce, Walker in the middle. Cedeno, Jaramillo, and Hart at the bottom. Get the Cubs defense set for you here in a second as Andrew McCutcheon looks at strike one from Mr. Zambrano. Now certainly statistically it has not been a dream season for Carlos Zambrano a stint on the disabled list some ineffective starts uh, since coming off the DL but as we mentioned his last time out against the Mets about as good as we've seen him this year Went six strong innings gave up only three hits in one run struck out seven. Here 
know, just like Lou's message to the team uh, before this series here in Pittsburgh, uh, finish strong, have some pride in yourself, some pride in the team, and that's uh, really what Carlos has to work for here in his last few starts of the season. Just go out there and try to finish as strong as possible. Well, as much as we'd all like to change a few things in the past, you, you can't. There's nothing you can do about what's occurred to this point. You just try to finish strong and the numbers will speak for themselves. A 3-2 pitch. Just missed ball four. So that's a lead off walk to McCutcheon. He likes to run his 16 out of 20 in the stolen base department. But he's usually pretty good stopping the opposition. And so is Coy Hill. Play. We have Scales, Fukudome, and Hot Power across the outfield today. Baker moves from second to third in place of Aramis Ramirez. Terrio at short, Fontenot at second, Derek Lee over at first base. Battery of Zambrano and Coy Hill. Switch hitting second baseman Delwyn Young. Strike one. Young is 0 for his last 16 and 5 for his last 51. Kick and the pitch is outside on a sinking fastball that tailed away. Cuts couldn't pick up any ground again on the playoff leaders as the Cardinals got a come from behind win last night. Matt Holl rather, uh, yeah, Matt Holiday off Trevor Hoffman in the ninth game winning two run homer. Runner goes and it's hit foul out of play. So St. Louis won. And so did the Rockies for the fifth consecutive time. They're 19 games over 500 for the first time ever. It's 79 and 60. So the Cubs are still a distant 11 and a half out in the Central and eight back and in fifth in the wild card race. Swing and the miss. Strike three. No use of crying about it. The Cubs have put themselves in this situation. And with the season dwindling, there's 25 games left. The math is pretty dire. The math is never mind anyway. Garrett Jones playing right for the second straight night. Drives it the other way. Bobby scales his back and will make the catch right in front of the dirt as McCutcheon will head back to first base. Jones has some pop in that bat. And gave it a ride to left, but for an out. Watch Jones throughout this series as well as batting practice every day before the ball game, and I've commented about his easy power. That time nearly drove one over the head of Bobby Scales the opposite way. Bobby had to backpedal just in front of the warning track to make the catch on that drive. Brandon Moss playing left. That's a strike. That we showed you in the open, Zambrano. Six and one lifetime here at PNC Park. This is his 13th start in this ballpark. Looking for his 11th career win against the Pirates against six losses. Long pause before the one strike pitch. One and one. The Menards big lumber stack. Brandon Moss. Hitting in the mid 340s his last 10 games and has hit it five in a row. It looks like Andrew McCutcheon really wants to run over there at first base. He was running on a foul ball to Delwyn Young. 
earlier in the inning just can't seem to get the jump he needs against Carlos Zambrano. Quick delivery to home plate will stop some base runners. Two and two. Steve Pierce, right handed hitting first baseman, is on deck. The kick, the pitch, right down the middle. Almost must have been looking for something else. The Pirates get a lead off walk with no runs. The Cubs have a one to nothing lead early. Time 120, but be sure to arrive early. The first 10,000 fans will receive a Cubs 1984 patch. Compliments of Pepsi in the Lincoln Park Zoo. The 84 Cubs clinched the Eastern Division here in Pittsburgh. First playoff appearance in 39 years. Old Three River Stadium used to be where the parking lot is now, I believe, uh, for PNC Park and Heinz Field. And those cookie cutters. AstroTurf enclosed stadiums. At Philadelphia, uh, Cincinnati, Pittsburgh. If you uh, didn't know what city you were in when you entered the ballpark, it may have taken you a little while. They all had a very similar look and feel. Riverfront Stadium, the Vet, and Three Rivers. There's a lot of AstroTurf in the National League, the Astrodome, Olympic Stadium. I think Andre Dawson's career might have lasted even a little longer now without all that turf. One, two on Bobby Scales, a switch hitting left fielder. At least for today. It's funny how guys came full circle on that afterturf. Uh, you know, you go through the minor leagues and you finally make it to the big leagues and you get a chance to play on AstroTurf. Man. You walk out of the dugout of scales. Can't check his swing. Strike three. You pounce in the ball off the turf. Boy, this is really cool. This is really cool. And then several knee surgeries later, you decide you don't like the afterturf quite as much as uh, you used to. Hill back of the plate just one out of his last 13 and he's done a fantastic job behind the plate all year long Giovanni Soto heating up four hits four RBIs on this trip and a guy like Corey Hill and Giovanni Soto they have a little bit of an advantage against Kevin Hart while the other guys played behind Kevin Hart, Coy Hill played right in front of him. And it helped call the game. 
and should have a better idea, you know, in an 0-2 count, what's Kevin Hart likely to throw? What did he throw when he was a member of the Cubs? Yeah, it's floated out of the left center for a base hit. So you got an 0-2 breaking ball in the strike zone. And picks up a one-out single. Not a poor pitch by Kevin Hart. He'd probably like to get it down the dirt a little bit more, but that's a strike breaking ball. It's Roy Hill in a defensive mode with a two-strike count. Just slapped it out there in the shallow left center for a single. Will not be trying to bunt. He does not have a sack bunt out here. Kevin Hart knows that Carlos can do some damage with the bat. That popped out of the mid of Jaramillo, but it did catch the outside corner. As it was called by Rob Drake, 0-2. 20 career home runs. That's a Cubs record for pitchers. Pretty short lead by Hill. 1-2. The Cubs last night with 14 hits that snapped a streak of nine straight games when they never did even get to 10 hits. Cubs are 36 and 12 when they get at least 10 hits in a game. Z strikes out two away. Both outs have been punch outs for a part. Coase started the game on the very first pitch with a solid single to left center. I'm sure Kevin Hart thought to himself, Coase is a patient guy. I'm just going to throw him right down the middle. Fell right into our trap. Well, we haven't seen too many cutters here early on. As you mentioned, he has a much bigger repertoire. As a starter and has thrown a lot of breaking balls early on. Well, there were a lot of appearances uh, as a member of the Cubs out of the bullpen where that was all he would throw one cutter after another. Had good command of it would throw it to both sides of the plate. That was the two seamer. Maybe that's something he's consciously uh, trying to stay away from today thinking that the Cubs are going to go to the plate looking for that cut fastball. The one one. Now two and one. Kevin Hart in his first at bat, making him work here in the second at bat. Outside. Third walk already for Hart. Brings up Ryan Terrio. A lot of pitches early for Kevin. First and second for Terrio. This is a key batter for Hart with Derek Lee on deck. Hit hard and throw, and Hill's going to come around. McCutcheon's going to throw to third. Save. 
No surprise McCutcheon didn't at least try for Hill at the plate with a catcher running, but instead he went after that trail runner and could not get Fukudome. So it's the 150th career RBI for Terry on a two to nothing Cubs lead. Nice quick swing that time, driving the ball past Delwyn Young into center field. Boy, was really laboring uh, around third base there. I'm a little surprised as well after we saw the throw from McCutcheon in the first inning of the ball game. I thought he would try to gun down Coy Hill at the plate, but instead he came up throwing to third, and Koske with a great pop up slide, able to get in under the tag. Well, Derek gets a fastball on the first pitch of this at bat and missed it 0 and 1. Ball to Walker goes down on a knee, drops it, has time, and it gets it to Pierce to retire it. Derek Lee. Brian Terrio with the two out RBI single. Cubs have scored one in each of the first two innings. will feature five classic games, special in-depth shows, plus many memorable moments and interviews from Michael's storied career as he prepares to enter the Pro Basketball Hall of Fame. It's 23 hours of MJ, a Hall of Fame celebration beginning Thursday at 5.30 with Chicago Tribune Live, only on Comcast Sportsnet. Pierce with his second straight start at first base. A two to nothing lead for Carlos. The slider low and outside. There is other action underway around baseball. Texas is at Cleveland. The Rangers got five in the first inning. They had a big Double header sweep yesterday. 21 runs over the two games after not scoring the previous 15 innings. Marlon Bird had seven hits in the double header. That's a good day. That's a really good day. Texas in a good battle for the wild card with the Boston Red Sox as Pierce takes the walk, second and lead off walk. For Zambrano, Boston starting the day, two games up on the Rangers, Seattle and Tampa Bay, are both eight and a half out. There's Neil Walker, switch hitter, playing third base. Time was 
the Pirates top prospect according to Baseball America first round pick back in 2004 and he's from here. Good location 0 2. So the profile on Neil Walker and his 24th birthday is tomorrow. School football player, two time Pittsburgh Post Gazette male athlete of the year. And he was in high school at Pine Richland High. Taken right out of high school. Pretty athletic family. His dad, Tom, was a pitcher in the majors back in the 70s. His older brother, Matt. Played in the Detroit organization. Swings and misses. And his older sister played basketball in the Women's Irish Super League. How about that? Well, there was a Women's Irish Super League. Big splitter there by Z to get his third strikeout. Two of his three strikeouts have come on the split finger. That was a good one that bottomed out in the dirt to get the swinging strike. Another one earlier to Delwyn Young stayed up around the letters. He's kind of wiggled up there, never really took the break, but Delwyn Young swung through it anyway. First time Ronnie has faced Zambrano. One and one. Couple of good friends, former teammates, both guys from Venezuela. Here's a 1 1 and a base hit. Their first of the day, first and second. Shot in the left field by Ronnie Cedeno. That fastball got right in there on the handle of the bat, but flips it out in front of Bobby Scales for the first pirate hit of the game. Now Neil swinging and missing. Actually, foul tip into the mitt, which is the same as a swing and a miss. Definitely a double play candidate does not run well at all. He's grounded into 10 this season and only 184 at bats. Oh, well, they had a shot at Pierce who slipped as he tried to go back to the back, but the throw is just a little bit off line. I think that throw is on the back or on the shortstop side of second base. They get Pierce at second. You see just the slightest slip there as he goes back in on his belly. Unfortunately, Coy's throw was on the second base side of the bag. Has a moment like Steve Pierce just had, and it's a terrifying feeling. You know you're in jeopardy of getting thrown out, and you start swimming in the dirt. That's you're treading water, treading sand. Your wheels are spinning. You're using your hands. You got dirt under your fingernails, trying to claw your way back to second base. That is a very helpless feel. Whole time you're sliding back into second base, you're telling yourself, please make it be a bad throw. Please make it be a bad throw. Because you know you're out there in no man's land. 2 2 to Jaramillo got in on him and he fouled it off back to the plate out of play. Adam Wainwright against Jeff Supon today in Milwaukee. They haven't yet started. 
We'll see the Brewers next week at Wrigley Field, a four game series. Just outside. Well, the Brewers, Bob, are 34 and 36 at home. Miller Park has always been a big home field advantage for them, but not this time around. The tough play is Fontenot goes out, makes a nice over the shoulder grab, and almost turned a double play. Pierce got back. As Fontenot got out there, there was just enough air underneath that pop fly for him to catch it. He was running straight out into right field with his back to home plate, never took his eye off the ball, and has the presence of mind to wheel around, hoping that Pierce was too far off the bag at second. You see Pierce trying to read that fly ball as it got closer and closer to Mike Fontenot. He started back to second base rather casually and then had to hurry back ahead of the throw. Kevin Hart tops one over Zambrano. Terrio picks it up, throws to Lee. Beats Hart by a step, and the inning is over as the Pirates strand two. After two, the Cubs lead two to nothing. Main guy in the Sox battle the Oakland Athletics before heading west. It's the Sox and the A's tonight at 7 right here on Comcast Sportsnet. Fans best friend. The A's won last night. Saw this note the uh, White Sox are 15 and 17 against the last place teams in the American League. And you now the Cubs have had some issues with a couple of the last place teams in the National League. The Washington Nationals beat them two out of three at Wrigley Field. And while they're not at last, they're a game out of last. The Padres gave the Cubs all they could handle. Well, those are games you and teams you have to beat. And the really good teams beat those teams badly. Yeah, consistently. Hard enough to beat the, the first and second place teams, but you really need to do damage against the as they say in baseball, the second division clubs. Off power hits it foul. Well, everything he has hit against Kevin Hart has been pulled foul. fans here in Pittsburgh. This is a nice trip to make. Beautiful ballpark. And it's an underrated downtown inside. Two and one. 
Well, if you happen to stay in one of the downtown hotels, once you get here, you don't really need your car. I mean, we've talked a lot about the bridges here in Pittsburgh. They close the Roberto Clemente Bridge uh, after the ball game, before the ball game, so the fans can use it as access to cross the river and get in here to PNC Park. It's, it's a very convenient city uh, if you're going to travel to watch the Cubs. Parrot harassing fans as always. 3-1, ball four. So Hawk Power has walked both times. The 25th annual Cubs convention will take place at the Hilton Chicago January 15th, 16th, and 17th, 2010. Rooms are available now by calling the Hilton Chicago at 312-922-4400 and asking for the Cubs convention rate. Weekend passes will go on sale in early November, and for more info, visit Cubs.com. Sack fly in the first inning. Well, we talked a lot about Jeff Baker and his offensive prowess since coming over to the Cubs. Uh, the thing that really stands out for me as well is defensively, his head is always in the ball game. He always knows where those base runners are. Going to be able to pick off the tip of Michael Hoffauer. He's back underneath the tag. I mean, we've seen him make some catches on balls out into shallow right field and immediately spin around and throw exactly to the place where the ball should go. Always thinking a step ahead. We'd love to see that in a defender. That'll be foul as it's picked up by Walker. The trade that sent Kevin Hart to Pittsburgh also sent John Grabo and Tom Gorzolani to the Cubs. It was on July 30th, and it came uh, the same day that he beat the Houston Astros. So he gets the win, and right after the game is told, by the way, you've been traded. Just one and four with the Pirates with a 6.35 swing and a miss. Strike three. They want a breaking ball once again. A lot more sliders than we've ever seen Kevin Hart throw in any of his appearances with the Chicago Cubs. Apparently, uh, Joe Kerrigan, the pitching coach for the Pirates, feels that's a good pitch for him, something he needs to continue to work on here at the end of the season. Jose Escanio also involved in that trade. Currently on the D.O. with right shoulder tendonitis. The Cubs have to feel pretty good so far about that deal. Grabo in particular has been very good for the Cubs. Tom Gorzolani is a guy who is versatile. He can start. He can pitch in relief. Never have a good enough good left-handers in your bullpen. I think everybody sees potential in Kevin Hart, but he just has not thrown enough strikes. Coming into today, 37 strikeouts, 30 walks. That's not a good ratio. And over the long haul, that will have to improve dramatically for him to have success. Yeah, you'd like to see that ratio at least two strikeouts for every walk, if not better. Fonzo turns on it. That's a base hit. Hawk Power on his way to third. And no relay throw by Cedeno. They're at the corners with one out. Hoffbauer is not known for his base running prowess, but he makes a real good decision right here. Fondo hooks that ball into the corner. 
And you see, anytime you get that outfielder moving laterally, if he's coming straight in on the ball, then you probably have to stop at second base. But he was moving to his left. Michael Hoffpower turned the bag at second and easily made it to third base. Well, as you hint at, as Bobby Scales takes ball one, base running is uh, two parts, the speed, but more importantly is, is the mental component, making the right decision, getting the right lead. There are a lot of guys in the history of baseball who haven't been particularly fast, but have been excellent base runners. That's a great point, former Cub manager and a former coach of mine in San Francisco, Don Zimmer used to say that base running will win or lose more games for you over the course of the season than any other fundamental. We used to spend a lot of time in spring training uh, walking around the bases early in the morning talking about situations that come up how to best take advantage of every base runner you get. They're going to try to turn two but they'll only get one as Hawk Power scores scales knocks him in on a fielder's choice and the Cubs have scored yet again. Single run in each of the first three innings. <laughs> Little topper to the right side here. Bobby Scale speed. He understands if he beats that relay throw to first base, the Cubs are going to get another run and he's going to get an RBI. So Bobby really turned on the afterburners to make sure he beat that relay throw to first. Sinatra on a field mic. Yell back, helping the base runner. Here's a pitch. Ground ball to second. Delwyn Young scoops it and gets the out. Cubs with one in the first, one in the second, and another in the third. Three to nothing. And including bleacher seats to purchase tickets visit cubs.com call 1-800 the cubs or visit the wrigley field box office underway in the last of the third carlos has walked the leadoff man in each of the first two innings including mccutcheon in the first one ball one strike The Cubs last year went 14 and 4 against the Pirates, 7 and 2 here. They've gone 8 and 2 this year, including 4 and 1 here in Pittsburgh, and they're 44 and 29 in this ballpark. I can't imagine the Cubs have a better record 
terms of their winning percentage in any other road park. Still two and two. for the parrot to possibly shoot a hot dog up here to the booth. Yeah. We're going to have a shot. Took a shot at us the first game of the series and unfortunately he overshot. Hit it up on the roof. A lot of the left handled by Bobby Scales. The parrot is not camera shot. Probably a little inferiority complex for the pair. You know, here in the state of Pennsylvania, the Philly fanatic probably gets most of the pub. This is picture in the paper a lot more often. A lot more fans see the Philly fanatic, and their team has had more success. But uh, Parrot's real good too. Rather a pear-shaped build. Needs to little, lose a little weight in the middle. I think the parrot got in the middle of the turnstile that you were talking about earlier. Might be it, yeah. Because there's really been a flood of fans coming in yeah. since the early part of the ball game. It's clogging up all the all the gates. Is that a mascot or just a really, really avid fan? Must be off work today. Young walks. It's a walk for inning now for Carlos. Fortunately, it hasn't hurt him to this point, but you don't want to walk too many guys in front of Garrett Jones. Now, there is a pirate fan. Or a real pirate. Jones knocked in. Two last night with a homer and later a sacrifice fly. And he takes a strike. Cubs back home for seven starting on Friday while the Pirates hit the road. They'll be in Houston on Friday after an off day tomorrow. They have been really bad on the road. They're 18 and 50 away from PNC Park. Including 11 consecutive losses currently, and they've lost 21 in a row at Milwaukee. Brown ball base hit in the right. First and second. Coach Belko upcoming schedule off tomorrow. And then again, the Reds and the Brewers are in. We'll have Saturday's game at straight up noon, pregame at 11:30, right here on Comcast Sportsnet. Moss in the cleanup position, knocks one off the leg of Zambrano. He's going to flip to Lee. Nicely done. Looks like he's okay. Is Look at Halbert's going to come out just to make sure. But a nice under control flip to Derek Lee. It would have been easy to panic in that spot, but he didn't. He's indicating it hit him on the upper part of his uh, right thigh. Yeah, you're right. He, he stayed under control nicely there as that ball bounced back toward the first baseline. Boy, how many times have we seen a pitcher pick that ball up and fire it down the right field line? Moves into a fire drill on the bases, but Zambrano, yes, a nice little overhanded toss to Derek Lee. Knew he had time to get Moss in first base. If 
faces Pierce with first base open. Runners at second and third. He can be a little careful with him if he wants to be with the rookie Walker on deck. Guy struck out. Back in the second, although Walker will hit from the left side. And here's a right. Say to yourself, well, we cannot let this guy beat us. I mean, you can be pretty aggressive going after everybody. Today, you can go after Jones because you lead three to nothing. You bring up a great point. Uh, offense makes a big difference in how a pitcher goes about attacking the opposing lineup. You spot him to some early runs. Ryan Dempster, seven in the first last night. Big Z, one in the first, one in the second, one in the third today. You can be a little more aggressive, even against those guys like Garrett Jones that you say uh, has a chance to hit the ball out of the ballpark. Swing and a miss to end the inning. They lead two in scoring position, and the Cubs lead three to nothing. Question: Which franchise holds the record for the longest consecutive game streak without being no hit? Well, the Pirates throwing a no hitter against me in this series. He, uh, the Parrot, rather, just shot another one over the roof. It's an A for effort. Didn't know his own strength. Zambrano takes ball one. Three nothing Cubs. There, Kevin Hart threw him a changeup on a 1 0 pitch. You think Carlos wants to hit one in the river? Uh, he'd love to. We know he's capable. We've seen him hit balls that far before. Just like to see him finish the at bat with all of his body parts intact. Yeah, 
players on the Cubs uh, dugout were telling him, hey, she went up there to the booth. Just miscalculated a little. That's the, the, the wadding that he puts in the gun that you saw fall out of your picture there. The hot dog sailed over the roof. Someone will leave the game, eighth or ninth inning, maybe right after, get in their car. That's deep center field. McCutcheon is going to have room right in the middle of the track. They're going to see a, a hot dog on the windshield. <laughs> I wonder how the heck did that happen? Where did that come from? Well, in as many games as we've seen here at PNC Park, I'm still not quite sure how the wind affects the ball down at field level. They have the big scoreboard out there in left field. And Couple of decks of grandstands, and it appears that's the direction the wind is coming from today. Might have actually knocked that ball. Carlos hit down a little bit to straightaway center field. Might help balls hit the right field a little bit, but it's kind of hard to tell. Well, we're, we're nowhere near the field, so that's part of the reason why we have trouble <laughs> yeah. figuring it out. We're above the wind up here. There's very little gravity in this booth. Fukudome has been on both times a single and a walk. But the other problem Kevin Hart has had today is even when he gets out, it's not like it's happening in the first couple of pitches. So major league travel it's no big deal for Kevin Hart. He's seen it all. The one out of Terrio is a strike. Well, that is a big factor for for young players uh, when they're initially drafted and start to play professional baseball. Some of the guys that come from small hometowns maybe haven't uh, ventured beyond the county lines very much, and all of a sudden they find themselves in a strange place, riding buses from city to city. Maybe get called up a level in the middle of the season, and that's a tough adjustment for a kid uh, who's never been away from home, first of all, and uh, you know never played that kind of baseball. Draft pick when I was in the minor league system with the San Francisco Giants, who came from a small town in Texas, and just could never seem to make the adjustment, and ended up uh, leaving professional baseball after just a couple of seasons. All four. How about this? We have seen a walk in every half inning for both teams. I'm not surprised. It feels like it. Well, if you had a Kevin Hart Russ Ortiz matchup, you better pack two lunches. It's going to be a long day. Terrio runs. And is in as Jaramillo couldn't handle the pitch. 
But this will happen a lot of times when the catcher sees that runner out of the corner of his eye and he knew that Ryan Terrio had a big jump over there at first base. So Jaramillo tried to make up for it by being extra quick behind the plate and lost the handle on the baseball. That's driven deep to center. McCutcheon, though, is going to make the catch. Well struck by Lee before an out. Comes from Ontario at second. They lead three to nothing. They win the fourth. Franchise holds the record for the longest game streak without being no hit. Cubs have had a very long streak going back to 1965, but the Yankees going more than 7,000 games between no hitters against them. Last time the uh, Cubs. Where no hit, it was a perfect game dealt by Sandy Koufax. Game that featured just one hit total at Dodger Stadium. One ball, no strikes on Neil Walker. Out into left center, and it'll get down in between Scales and Fukudoma. Yeah. Strikeouts to Don Kessinger, the only Cub to not strike out against Sandy Koufax that day. September 9th, 1965. 44 years ago today. Sedanio one for one. Hendley at the Cubs allowed one hit and an unearned run. That's a pretty tough loss. Sedano will have a lot to brag about in the offseason. Tell Carlos Zambrano got you a couple of times. He's two for two against his former teammate. The tying run is going to come to the plate. First one was off the handle. This one was down near the trademark. Now a slashing swing from Ronnie Cedeno. Gets a little floater out into shallow center. Now Wisconsin native Jason Jaramillo. A bouncer up the middle. Can they turn two? They get one. They do get it. The out was called. By Greg Gibson at second base. As Terry was trying to get the ball out of his glove to throw the first. Have an awkward attempt there. Mike Fondo had to actually toss this ball back behind himself to Terry. Ryan uh, went into the glove with the bare hand. The ball 
just kind of popped out the heel of the glove. Greg Gibson right on top of the place and he was making the exchange. I'm not so sure. We'll take it. Well, for a split second. I mean, the key is that you're pulling the ball out. Really, regardless of whether it's in or not. Hart bunts it foul. He's trying to put Harrod Neal in the scoring position for McCutcheon. I'm surprised to see Kevin Hart taking this at bat right here to tell you the truth. He's thrown an awful lot of pitches through the first four innings of this ball game. Fonson will cover first, first sacrifice of Kevin Hart's career. And I understand, I believe I understand John Russell, what he's trying to do. He's trying to give Kevin Hart every opportunity to win this ball game, keep him in there through five innings, and hope the Pirates offense can find a way to come back and take a lead in this game. But Given the number of pitches he's thrown and his lack of command in this game and the, the fact that you don't know how many opportunities you're going to get against Carlos Zambrano, I thought we might see a pinch hitter right there. Both teams have fully stacked bullpens with the expanded rosters. Foul tip strike one on McCutcheon. Second straight inning, they had a chance. With runners in scoring position. He struck out. Steve Pierce with runners in second and third in the third inning. Singles. Left center for Godome. Can't make the catch and they'll get two. McCutcheon in the second with a double. Great effort by Fukudome. He just couldn't get it and it's now three to two. Just would not stay in. It looked like it came out even before he hit the ground. Just ticked off the webbing of the glove. Nice diving effort. And then Bobby Scales loses his footing as he tries to change direction there. And McCutcheon ends up at second base. So they are right back in it. Down only a run. Feels like the Cubs have dominated this game, but they only lead three to two. And the tying run is now. In scoring position, and one of their fastest players, McCutcheon, trying to get as big a lead as possible. Zim Brown is starting to show some signs out there uh, that he's either upset with his own pitches or upset that uh, Kosuke wasn't able to hang on to that baseball. He's been very much under control through this point of the ball game, but some signs that maybe he's starting to get rattled a little bit. 3 and 0 with Jones on deck. McCutcheon, by the way, second among all National League leadoff hitters with 47 RBIs, trailing only Jimmy Rollins, who has 55. Great job by Terry. He was still on the move when he caught that pickoff attempt. Recently, you have to believe Carlos got to go right after him here with Jones in the on deck circle. Back in it. Three and two. And he's 0 for his last 17. Call strike three. Young didn't take the bat off his shoulders. And he finally gets out of it. McCutcheon, though. Makes it a one run game. It's 3 2.
scales with a ground ball to Steve Pierce. Michael Hoffpower trying to score. And Pierce deciding to go for the force play at second instead of throwing all. And we talked about it in the outfield earlier in the ball game. If you get a, a position player moving laterally, it makes it much tougher to make that throw directly to where you want to throw it. And with Pierce moving to his right towards second base, it was going to be an awfully tough throw back to home plate. So he just went to the middle of the diamond for the force out, and the Pirates were unable to turn the double play. Micah has walked twice and scored once. The uh, Cubs scoreless in the fourth for the first time today. Off power will be followed by Baker and then Fontenot. That ball deep to right. Is it going to be high enough? Yes, two rows in for a home run. That ball got out in a major hurry. And a Pirates fan tossing it back. And they copy the uh, Cup fans at Wrigley Field. And it's 4 to 2. Well, it went out a lot faster than it came back. I'll say that Michael Hoffman with a screaming line drive homer had to get up high enough to get over that 21 foot tall out of town scoreboard in right field and just did get it up into the seating area. Second homer in as many games for Hoffman. One to Baker. We don't see anyone throwing in the pirate bullpen, but a lot of stretching. Assistant pitching coaches for the Pirates sitting right below our booth just screamed out get somebody warming up get a new pitcher. Full count three and two. There's that line drive home run off the bat of Micah Hoffpower or Heineken home run replay fastball out over the plate allowing him to get that extension he's looking for. The only question was is it high enough. Yes indeed it was. Trying to extend his hitting streak to seven. He has ten hits on this trip. And what would you say of the ten hits on this trip? Maybe seven have come to the opposite field? Yeah. Well, all three last night. Sunday was hit to right. Uh, six or seven, yeah. Jeff Karstens just activated off the uh, disabled list is up in the bullpen. In fact, he was reinstated today. He had been on the DL with a low back strain. Ball four, that's low. The 
Cubs have taken six walks today against the inefficient Kevin Hart. Next Monday, September 14th, is Van Camp and Investments Day at Wrigley Field. Don't miss the action as the Cubs take on the Brewers at 7.05. Lucky seed winners will win great prizes throughout the game. Compliments of Van Camp and Investments. One to six to three. Fontenot brings into the double play. Kevin Hart very deliberate after that ball was hit back to him. He took a couple of steps and a crow hop before finally delivering the ball to Ronnie Sedanu, who had to really put some mustard on his return throw to first base to complete that double play. Bases cleared. It's Bobby Scales. Ball strike. Count has gone down each inning, but started at 30. Into the right field corner, a fair ball for Scales. He'll be on his way to second base. Jones gets it back in fairly quickly. Hey, Scales. Taking a fastball out over the plate. A lot of top spin on that line drive. It shot all the way down into the right field corner. Hit the base of the fence out there. Popped straight up in the air. Let's see what Kevin Hart tries to do with Coy Hill here, knowing that Zambrano is the guy in the on deck circle. Look, Joe Kerrigan's going to go out to make sure they know exactly what they want to do here to Coy Hill. And while we have an extra moment, Coy Hill will be hosting a Big charity event for uh, Make a Wish, the uh, Kansas chapters, December 5th in Wichita. And you can go to bigwishkansas.com for more information on the event coming up in Wichita and how you can contribute. Coy Hill's Big Wish coming up in December. Also, if you're on Facebook, you can search Coy Hill's Big Wish and find more information. So here we go with two outs and a breaking ball low to Hill. Hart's been under constant pressure all afternoon, in part because of six walks. center we've talked about the Pirates outfielders and how they like to bunch the gaps take away those doubles and triples into right center and left center but at least for this at bat by Coy Hill we're giving him a lot of room in right center Season high for Hart, who walked five and back to back starts as a Cub back in the middle part of July.
Payoff pitch. That's foul. Nicely done, Matt. Not only found a kid, but found a Cup fan. Not hard to do on that first base side of the field. Lots of the Cup fans uh, sitting over there behind the dugout or around the dugout. Another 3 2 to Hill at the end of the bat. And a rainbow to right for Garrett Jones to end the inning. Hawk power led off the top of the fifth. But a line shot homer to right is second of the series. And that gives the Cubs a 4 2 lead. It's giving them some run support. Yeah, sometimes okay is good enough when the offense is clicking and guys are driving in runs, getting on base, keeping the pressure on the Pirates. Uh, okay, will get it done today. Real struggle for Kevin Hart to get through five innings, 108 pitches, and the Cubs lead 4-2. As Garrett Jones pops up the first pitch behind home plate and. Hill has just enough room to make the catch. Yeah, seeing Coy Hill chase that pop up behind home plate and leave his hockey style mask on. I, we got an email earlier this year from a young catcher that asked about that. He said his coach wants him to take the mask off, even though it's the hockey style mask. And he was asking my opinion. My opinion is listen to your coach. The guys at the big league level who are used to using the old school mask with the helmet underneath. Uh, the, they say the visibility with these hockey style masks is so good and it is so much lighter than the old mask that they feel comfortable chasing pop ups and leaving the mask on. But if your coach wants you to take it off, I suggest you take it off. Listen to your coach. Scales racing over. Oh, good effort. He banged hard into the wall and he's hurt. Unfortunately, there is some padding over there. That ball was foul. Mark O'Neill will make the long run out there as Bobby goes and retrieves the ball. Well, he just never broke it down at all. Usually, you'll see an outfielder start to slow down as they approach that foul line, knowing that that wall is just inches away. But Bobby never slowed down a bit. Hit that padded wall awfully hard. Hopefully, just got the wind knocked out of him a little bit. Let me 
to tell you something. The wall is undefeated. Yeah. Looks like he's going to be okay. Great effort. I also think Bobby understands the opportunity in front of him with the injury of Soriano, Sam Fold. Got a little banged up with a wrist. So he's gotten a chance now to make five consecutive starts and left. And it's been a long, long road for Bobby. This is his 11th pro season and made his major league debut here in 2009. So it's going to take a broken bone, I think, to get him to come out. Meanwhile, 0-2 on Moss. Make it 0-3, strikes out looking. A lot of the Pirates uh, look like they're expecting something else in those two strike counts. We've seen a number of fastballs right down the middle of the plate on a two strike count, and the Pirates hitters either just can't pull the trigger or they're looking for something else. Coming back on an 0 1. Pop up by Pierce. Hill over there with Baker. Coy calling, and he has it. Couple of uh, put outs in the inning. McCoy Hill on foul balls as the Pirates go down in order. 4 2 cuts. Kevin Hart's afternoon is over. He went five innings, gave up six hits, three strikeouts, six walks, four earned runs, and he'll give way to right hander Jeff Karstens. Here, as we start the sixth inning, it'll be Carlos Zambrano to lead it off for the Cubs and then the top of the order. As we mentioned, Karstens just came off the disabled list. Had some back issues. First pitch strike on Zambrano. We compare the numbers for the starters. Uh, walks and strikeouts flip flopped through five innings. Z with a ground ball to Sedano. Carlos now 0 for 3. Back to the top at Fukudome. Karsten's making his 33rd appearance. He has made 10 starts. 
in the background of your picture there as Koske made his way to the plate Lou Pinella and Coy Hill talking about some hitting mechanics. Lou was uh, insinuating that maybe Coy Hill's front shoulder was flying open just a little bit. with the Pirates since August 17th. Last start came on June 5th. And he's been in relief since. Another player that came over from the Yankees in that trade that sent Xavier Nady to the Big Apple. Ross Olendorfer, Daniel McCutcheon, Jose Tabata, and Jeff Carson's on the mound today all came to the Pirates. And in his Pirates debut on August 1st of last year, after being acquired from the Yankees, six shutout innings to beat the Cubs. Strike three. Hey, Cup fans, want to throw out the first pitch at Wrigley on September 30th? How about taking some swings inside the Cup's batting cage or maybe playing catch with a friend by the Ivy? Your friends at MetLife want to make that happen. Visit Cubs.com slash MetLife to enter for your chance to win. This is the second time in six innings. Cubs have made two outs before getting a base runner, and this will be the first time they've gone one, two, three. We're head to the bottom of the six. Cubs four, Pirates two. Underway in the bottom of the sixth. One ball, no strikes on Neil Walker. As the Cubs lead 4 2, they're shooting for the sweep. They're dominating the Pirates in the recent past. 
They've gone 25 and 6 in their last 31 games against the Pirates. does get to a point Len, where it gets between your ears uh, as the losing team the Pirates uh, on the losing end of those numbers you just mentioned and it gets in between the ears of the Cubs as well you know you're going to play the Pirates and dominated them in the recent past you feel good about yourself going into the series you've had recent success it all adds up uh, a pretty good uh, streak for the Cubs against the Buccos and we've talked a lot about the Pirates and what they've done the last couple of years, they've jettisoned a, a lot of players, a lot of guys who've been here a while, call strike three. Strikeout number seven for Zambrano. And four have been of the looking variety. Sign up for a subscription to Vineline, the official monthly magazine of the Chicago Cubs. Only Vineline offers exclusive coverage from spring training all the way through the Cubs' next postseason run. Visit the Vineline blog at Cubs.com and order today. Cedeno is two for two versus Zambrano. The only area they haven't kind of flushed out in terms of getting rid of guys who've been here a while is is a pitching staff, which makes sense. A lot harder to find quality arms. So those guys like Zach Duke and Bob Mahal and Matt Caps are still here. Sedeno fans. Go to on demand from Comcast. And you'll have access to Comcast Sportsnet Cubs games ready to watch on your schedule. To find out more, call 1 888 4 Best TV. What a bit quicker pace this inning for Carlos. He's feeling it out there this inning, throwing a lot of strikes, punching out the first two hitters of the inning. This one, if he can get out of it quickly. A one two to Jaramillo outside. Haven't seen the sun in a while. Very overcast skies. And again, mild temperatures in the low 70s. And most importantly, no rain. Driven the other way, that's slicing, and it'll be caught by Bobby Scales. Off to the seven, Cubs going for the sweep and a four and two trip, and they lead this one four to two.
game live immediately following the game right here on Comcast Sportsnet. Fans best friend. A good series for the Cubs here in Pittsburgh after they dropped two of three in New York. Ball one low from Jeff Karstens to Derek Lee. Hit. First for Derek in the ball game and his eighth of the trip. There's no better place for Cubs fans to hold a holiday party than Harry Carey's Italian Steakhouse in Chicago, Rosemont, or Lombard, or Harry Carey's Tavern in Wrigleyville. Call 773 Holy Cow or visit HarryCarries.com to plan your event today. Off power locked in, two walks and a home run. We got a lot of response on our four color pin discussion from last night. Uh, we've heard about a six color pin. We got an email about a ten color pin from Ben Zetlitz. And I believe it was Kevin Anderson, right? Comcast Sportsnet producer, and his Supreme uh, Post game shows, found a 12 color pin. I'm good with four, to be honest. I don't know what I would do with 12 colors. I would just take a little too long to actually find the right color. I mean, at least with four, kind of limits the options. Yeah, really, I never used the black. I could occasionally do a crossword puzzle. I'll use black because uh, the other ends run out faster. I see what you do with your pen drives me crazy because it's uneven. When I devised my setup with this four color pen, I tried to find a way that all four colors would be used somewhat similarly. Let's go down the right field line because you can see what the problem would be if you use, for instance, red too much and you never use green. All of a sudden, the red is gone, but you still have a full. Green pen. So then you, you have to get an entirely new pen just because you ran out of one fourth of the colors. That seems like a waste. <laughs> We're overthinking the colored pen here. <laughs> but you see my point. Well, I do see the point. Nobody out, Dave. Nobody out. I don't want to get mad at one color and say, you know, red, what are you doing? to baseball our BMW <laughs> ultimate drive of the game like Hawkeye with a solo home run and an RBI which is blue ink for me it's like his one color pen blew up yeah <laughs> another foul still two and two on Hawkeye Just like some people don't use colored pens on their scorebooks, everybody keeps their card a little bit different. Yeah. Well, Micah Head is bound and determined to give everyone between first base and the right field foul pole a shot at a foul ball. She's ordering her pens as we speak. Right, let me and that'll be fair into the right field corner. Finally straightened one out. And has a couple of hits. Well, he's wearing out right field. The good thing is uh, Mike has been patient today, more so than probably we've seen him all season long. Fouling off the tough pitcher's pitches, taking the balls that are out of the zone, and when he does get a strike, uh, he's been able to scald it down into that right field corner. Well, 
The infielders will come about halfway in with runners at second and third and no outs and a breaking ball a strike to Baker. Carstens with an 0 1. Another breaking ball. But that one out of the zone, 1 and 1. Let's we'll see if Carstens throws any fastballs in the sequence. Physical notes to, to use in the future when you see Jeff Carstens again. A couple of runners in scoring position in a fairly close ball game, and what does he do? He goes right to his out pitch, that big curve ball. Every pitch of the at bat to Jeff Baker. Infielder still in, and ball on to Fontenot. Oh, that was a heater. Rally with Derek Lee lacing one in the center, and then Michael Hoffpower pounded a double to right. But then Baker took a call third, and it's 2 0 on Fontenot. Pitch 3 0. Scales waiting on deck. Just intentionally throw ball four. Well, does Joe Kerrigan want to come out or not? Here he comes. Some discussion over there between manager John Russell, Perry Hill, and Joe Kerrigan before he went out to make this visit to the mound. I would imagine since Perry Hill was involved, it had something to do with how they want to position their defenders uh, from potential double play. Do you want to play the infield back up the middle, go for two? Do you want to bring everybody in, try to cut off that fifth run at the plate? Louis Durante, the bullpen coach, getting the gear on. Hey, once again, uh, defensively, the Pirates are kind of in that in between zone. Uh, they're not really a double play depth, but they're not really all the way in either. Base is loaded, one out, we're in the seventh. And the 0 1 to Scales is hit foul off to the left. Soto getting stretched out in case he's needed late. Two pitch. 
and she's in the dirt. One and two. Many times, Len, the determining factor on where the play is on a ground ball in the infield is how hard the ball is hit. If it's a hard hit ball right at somebody, chances are the Pirates will go ahead and try to turn the double play to get out of the inning. If it's a slower hit ball, they may try to get Derek Lee at the plate. Another big punch out for Parsons, who's one out away from escaping this jam. again no question about it his backs against the wall Jeff Carson's going to drop that 12 6 curveball in there and here with a base hit to run Lee scores they'll try to get another one and is on plate. Six to two. That's a big one. Boy, hell, I'm sure was playing. Paying close attention, watching how Carson's had gone after his teammates with runners in scoring position, decided he was going to hit the first fastball he saw. That pitch was up and away, probably out of the strike zone, but managed to get the barrel on it, drive it into right field, and played a couple of more runs. And for the uh, second straight game, the Cubs starting pitcher gets at least four plate appearances. Dempster last night and some run on the day, and that's hammered foul. First and third, two in. Corey Hill with a two out, two run single. Cubs have their biggest lead of the afternoon at four. Sitting, those breaking balls in the dirt from Karstens. Well, you know that going in as a catcher. Certain pitchers on your staff, uh, especially the guys that rely on breaking pitches or split fingered fastballs, you're going to have a busy afternoon. Just like infielders know when there's a sinker ball pitcher on the mound, they're probably going to get a lot of action. If it's a left hander that throws a lot of off speed pitches, the third baseman and shortstop know they're going to get a lot of balls hit their direction. Hill running on a 3 2, swing and a miss. And the inning is over. They'll get up and stretch. The Cubs adding two on Hill's single. It's 6 2 for the visitors.
game on your computer with MLB.tv. It's the ultimate baseball experience featuring 100 out-of-market games per week live on your computer and catch those you missed on demand. For more details, visit Cubs.com where baseball is always on. One change for the Cubs. Sam Full comes in for defense. Or Bobby Scales in left. Getting set for a seventh inning of work, and again, he has a one in a while. Six starts ago when he beat the Phillies in Philadelphia. So, trying to make it two straight wins in the state of Pennsylvania. He will not get the uh, seventh as Lou's going to make a change. Ramon Vasquez hitting for Karstens, and Lou's going to go with John Grabo. So time for the Lexus call to the pin. Nice hand for Z from the Cup fans behind the visiting dugout. We'll see John Grabo when we come back to Pittsburgh. Not given up a hit or a run. Does have one walk, but that's it. One and oh to Ramon Vasquez. Pirates have got really good production off the bench. Their pinch hitters are 12 for their last 26. That's a 462 batting average. Three doubles a homer over that time. They're Tied for third in hits, third in average, and they lead the National League in doubles. Danny Batista's up in the Pirate pin. They need another pitcher in the eighth after Karstens was removed for Vasquez. And he gets one right to Ryan Terry. Picture discussing things. Don't want to read too much into that in terms of we don't know if they're talking about, we don't know what they're talking about. And when the manager's waving his arms like that, with his back to us, you just don't want to assume that it's a negative conversation. It might not be at all. This could be an explanation. Baker makes the play. Uh, for instance, I, I don't think the Angel Guzman uh, exchange was was a negative one. I don't think Angel was mad at Lou 
for taking him out. But anytime a pitcher talks to a manager as he's leaving and then the manager has a word with the pitcher, it, it makes it look like there's an argument. But I don't believe that was the case last night. And I think that's why most managers would rather have all those conversations take place in the dugout or away from the cameras because then a lot of times they have to explain what happened. No question about it. And the situation that we saw there, Zambrano went back out to start the inning, but when John Russell went with the left-handed pitch hitter, Lou went to John Grabo in the bullpen. That's a very a fairly common practice uh, among major league managers. You wait to see who the pitch hitter is going to be, and then you make a determination. Now, that being said, you let the reliever in the bullpen know if they bring up a left handed pitch hitter you're in the game. But you don't tell the starter you want him to go out there and take the mound with every intention that he's going to keep pitching in the ball game. You don't want to tell your starting pitcher hey listen you know we might take you out here depending on who the pinch hitter is. Then your pitcher doesn't take the mound with the same mindset that he would have if he felt he was going to stay in the ball game. That's great insight. Young pops. To Hoff Power in right. John Grable. A 1, 2, 3, 7, 6, 2 Cubs to the 8. For the sweep in this ball game, an RBI single by Ryan Terry on the second. They actually scored in the first, second, and third against Kevin Hart. Got another one in the fifth. Uh, Michael Hoff power homer, two in the seventh against Jeff Karsten's AT&T, the nation's fastest 3G network. AT&T, your world delivered. Kenny Bautista makes his second appearance as he went one, two, three in the eighth inning. On Monday afternoon. And it's the top of the Cubs order. Two Cubs. Here's a pitch. Dribbled foul by Fukudome, who's been on twice. One for three officially. And one more run wouldn't hurt anything. This game out of slam range, as we talked about earlier, not a lot of power in this Pirates lineup today, but to get that, uh, that fifth run separating you from your opponent. To diving young in the right. Don't 
Bell had a fastball out over the plate. Coastal just does sneak it past Del when Young into right field for a leadoff single. The pitch to Terrio. Bound back to the barrier. One strike. With the four run lead, this is when a lot of managers decide to uh, to be a little bit more proactive, maybe get a runner started over there, play a little hit and run. Ryan Terrio, as we know from past seasons, very adept at hitting that ball to the right side. You tend to take more chances when you have a, a lead in the ball game. Center two on with nobody out. Brings up Derek Lee. Well, as we take a look around the majors, pennant race is heating up. Nick Swisher with a game ending home run got the pie in the face last night. Derek Cheater still three hits away of. The Yankee all time hit record held by Lou Gehrig. How about the Phillies? They have four guys with at least 30 home runs. And David Ortiz with a home run as well. So Derek Lee with two on and nobody out here in the eighth. Red Sox are playing home run derby last night. A couple by Pedroia, J.D. Drew, and mentioned David Ortiz. I think they might even oh Euclid. Kevin Euclid hit a home run in that ball game as well. Alex Gonzalez also went deep in their 10 to nothing win. Ground ball to third. Walker will throw to second. They'll only get one. Looked like Walker had thoughts about trying to tag Koske as he ran past him. Koske avoided that tag, but that threw off the entire rhythm of that attempted at double play right there. They could only get the force at second base. You'll see as Walker moves to his left, he steps into the baseline. Koske went around him right there and gave Terrio enough time to get right on top of Delwyn Young at second base. Ooh. Looked like Koske might have been far enough out of that baseline. Uh, a little bit of protest from the pirate side of the field. They might have been able to get an out call there. I heard someone yell uh, he was out of the baseline. I don't know if it was a fan or if it came from the pirate dugout. But you know, Walker would rather have forced Koske than Terry and keep that runner off of third base. Pop power lines it into left center. It's caught out there by Moss, and the throw is going to be late. Michael Hawk power with a sacrifice fly, seven to two. He might be earning himself more playing time with the performance he's had the last couple of days. Boy, if it weren't for the way the Pirates play their outfield, he might have had a double at least. Moss was positioned perfectly to make that catch. Gets hit. Oh, there you see that left fielder over toward the gap in left center field. Perfectly in place to come in and make the catch on that line drive. If he's positioned at a normal straight up defensive position in left field, that ball does get into the gap all the way out to that 410 mark. I mean that that overshifting bunching those outfielders into the gap uh, has hurt the Pirates a lot more this year against the Cubs than it's helped but that was one play where it helped. Two on it's Fontenot taking a strike. Mike's one for three and took an intentional walk in the seventh. Kevin Gregg up in the Cubs pen we. 
almost assuredly won't see Angel Guzman today after working in back to back games. is 1-1 back up the middle. Lee's going to be sent by Mike Quay. And McCutcheon's throw is going to be cut off by Pierce. It's 8-2. RBI single Mike Fontenot. Ball that stayed up and out over the plate for Mike Fontenot. Good for him. Didn't try to pull it. Went right back up the middle of the field for a clean base hit. I'm surprised McCutcheon didn't come up throwing again on that play. Derek, we got a little bit of a late jump off of second base and uh, looked like they might have had a play on him at the plate had McCutcheon gone that direction. Sam Paul cranks it, but Jones catches it on the run. Sam with his first at bat since tweaking his wrist, but had a really good pass at that ball. They get two more. It's 8 2 to the bottom of the eighth. Close to a sweep with six outs to go and an 8 2 lead. Kevin Gregg has struggled lately. He'll make his 67th appearance as he faces Garrett Jones. Cardinals are ahead one to nothing in Milwaukee in the bottom of the fourth. A sack fly by Matt Holliday in the first inning. Supporting Adam Wainwright. We're in the bottom of the ninth in Cleveland, Texas. Book ending uh, five run innings. The first and the ninth, they scored five times. Scott Feldman went seven shutout innings, and they're close to winning that game. Is Scott Ayer's brother Willie trying to get that final out. Esteban Herman is five for five from the ninth spot in that game for Texas.
remember he was with the Cubs briefly in spring training. One out. And as Jones strikes out. Kevin Gray with a little bit of a quick pitch there to Garrett Jones. He came to a set position and just slid into his delivery, which is perfectly legal to do with nobody on base. Look, he caught Jones by surprise. Garrett Jones rarely takes a fastball for a strike. Moss hits it foul one and one. Swing and a miss, a ball and two strikes. Well, since Greg and Marmel swapped roles, Carlos has been perfect in save chances. It's been inconsistent for Kevin Gregg. He looked two runs in each of his two outings over the weekend in New York. And the three two pitch will do it again. Well, best of luck to the Peoria Chiefs. They start the Midwest League playoffs tonight. Double A Tennessee Smokies will start the Southern League playoffs tomorrow. Peoria plays Cedar Rapids. Austin Bibbins Dirks will go tonight in game one. Left hander Jeremy Papelbon in the best of five will start for Tennessee tomorrow. It's a best of three for Peoria, so there's not much room for error. Off between series in the Midwest League, uh, should uh, the first round happen to go the full three games, uh, the second round of the playoffs starts on Friday, or rather on Saturday. And if that series happens to go the full three games, the championship series starts the day after that. Two and zero on Pierce uh, Coy Hill goes out trying to change up the mojo here after he walked Moss. No walks. Make them hit their way out. Citron lead in the ball game late. Got defenders out there crashing into walls, diving in the dirt. They can put the ball at play. Well, an awkward looking swing for a 2 0, 2 and 1. I think the Cubs had anybody no. warming up. Well, Lou uh, out there for one reason, and that is to tell Kevin Gregg to throw strikes. I think we're going to get some activity up in that Cubs bullpen now, but there was nobody throwing when Lou made his way out there to the mound. Tom Borzolani going to get ready quickly. 
and his former teammates watching. One and all on the switch hitting Walker. Justin Bird has joined Gorzolani. In the dirt. We have now seen 12 walks in this game combined. Seven by the Pirates, five by the Cubs. Made for a very slow pace. And an aggravated Cubs manager at the moment. 3-0. They they better be getting ready quickly out there in that bullpen. Ball four would load them up. There's a strike, three and one. And Justin Berg has sat down and says Milan Kari down instead. There's a ground ball to Fontenot. They get one relay throw. Just couldn't turn it. That grab not really hit hard enough to turn a double play, but a quick pivot by Mike Fontenot on the run right Ontario to get the lead runner at second base. So first and third and Ronnie Cedeno ball one. Didn't offer it the front door slider. Get on the hands and fouled off. Well, we ask this hypothetical question all the time. Do you like a lot of offense or stellar pitching? I always like to see good pitching. I'll be honest with you, it's been aesthetically not a very fun game to watch. Well, and usually with the good pitching goes good defense and an emphasis on fundamentals because you're not going to score a bunch of runs. It's not going to turn into a slug fest. Some people like to see the ball bouncing around the field, rolling around the warning track. Well, that's deep for Sedano, and he just hit a three run homer. So Kevin Gray bitten again. Just over 63 innings pitched. Well, we talked about it when he was having his struggles as the closer. He's just one of those guys, for whatever reason this season, when he makes a mistake, it doesn't end up in the gap for a double. It doesn't end up for a base hit through the left side. It ends up in the bleachers. Unfortunately, the Cubs with some cushion. A strike to Harry Neal on two. The Pirates aren't done just yet. And it's been a big day for Sedano against his former mates. Three hits. Call strike three. Just caught the inside corner. Rough inning for Greg. He gave up three. The Cubs still lead by three as we head off to the ninth.
times a guided tour of the friendly confines has something for everyone. Each tour includes visits to places like the press box, clubhouses, dugouts, and much more. Tours are available on select dates throughout the season. Tickets are $25. A portion of the proceeds benefits Cubs designated charities. For more info or to purchase tickets, visit Cubs.com. Well, the uh, Pirates have not been in a closing situation in this series, and they really haven't had a lot of chances lately having lost 11 of their last 12 so their closer Matt Caps will enter the game down three here in the night. 24 saves on the season for Matt Caps. He's been a strike throwing machine in the past. He hasn't walked a batter in his last 12 appearances. Big insurance two run single by Coy Hill. And it came with two outs back in the seventh. Aaron Miles is on deck. And yeah, Greg Spot. A strike thrower in theory. At least in the past, that's been the case, but uh, tough today for almost everybody. Carlos Zambrano threw a lot of strikes, so did John Greenberg. But he's a tappy pull, as they say, for Kevin Gregg, Kevin Hart. Actually, with one more walk, Matt Caps will tie his career high as 15 on the year. And he strikes out Coy Hill. And it brings up Aaron Miles. He's trying to break a long over. Not a hit in his last 19 at bats. over a month ago at Colorado on August 8th. Now most of his plate appearances here since then have been off the bench. But over his last 19. Two for 22 on the season as a pinch hitter for Lou Pinella. Just never been able to get any kind of rhythm going offensively this season. Some shoulder problems. We hit 317 last year, 134 games, and 408 plate appearances with the St. Louis Cardinals. He was non tendered and quickly signed by the Cubs to a two year deal. But he's been on the DL twice this season with the shoulder and a hyper extended elbow. signing kind of coincided with Mark DeRosa getting traded. I, I think the, the better comparison at this point would be Jeff Baker. who's a pretty versatile guy and, and started to grab most of the time at second base. As we talked last night, Jeff has really worked himself into a, pretty much an everyday role now. You would think would figure pretty heavily into 2010's plans as well. Hit for Aaron Miles, snapping the 0 for 19. When you read the 
numbers when it sounds like it's been a long time since Aaron Miles has gotten a base hit. But if you ask Aaron Miles, it seems like it's been years since he last got a clean single into right center field. I mean, the guy has hit for average his entire career. Prior to this year, his lowest batting average was 263. Taylor May, 6 4 3. Put the Gomez hits into the double play. We'll head to the bottom of the ninth. The same chance for the closer, Carlos Marmol, the Cubs leading 8 5. Open year round with 30 flat screen TVs and an outdoor patio. Visit the Captain Morgan Club for a chance to win a batting practice session on Wrigley Field. Check out CaptainMorganClub.com to see all the daily specials and promotions. Carlos Marmel's been perfect in safe chances since he took over the ninth inning. Has done a much better job recently of throwing strikes, especially with that slider. That's a pitch that uh, obviously is his go to pitch and been very inconsistent most of the year until just recently. The Pirates will use Andy LaRoche to a bat for Matt Katz. Players that John Russell has available to possibly lead off this bottom half of the ninth inning. The only left handed hitter he has available is Ryan Doma, a switch hitter, and Doma is 0 for 4 lifetime with three strikeouts against Marvel and probably would be saved if they get a couple runners on base because he is really the lone power source they have left on the bench. LaRoche, two for six with a homer and two knocked in in the series. He came in struggling. Carlos will throw strikes because uh, we don't want to see Lou pacing too much in that dugout anymore today. <laughs> a fly to left and four came in and back a little bit makes a catch. Pulled him just a little bit off the back one. Well that's the kind of play you see a lot of outfielders fall down. Sampold came in a few steps, slammed on the brakes, backed up a couple of steps. And then plants and makes the play right where he started from. And you get your feet moving that fast in that short a period of time, but it's not unusual to see a guy slip and go down. Sam has really good instincts out there in the outfield, but he also is quick on his feet. And when he does make mistakes, and remember the ball he almost caught on the warning track in New York. He got all turned around but still was able to get to the ball. I think that the tough combination for a corner outfielder is a slow guy with bad instincts. And we've seen a few of those guys. Oh, yeah. 
Well, and, and you know, a certain amount of it is just God-given ability, uh, uh, but a lot of it is because Sam Fold works very hard in batting practice every day. We watch it on a daily basis. After he takes his round of batting practice, he'll go to left field, he'll go to center field, he'll go to right field, and he'll react to balls hit off the bat as McCutcheon goes down. Strike three. And he'll play it like a game situation. He'll, he'll break on the ball quickly. He'll run him down, get him back in. So that when he is out there in a ball game, it's a more natural thing for him. Nasty slide. No drama to this point. Two up, two down. It's Delwyn Young with two outs. Strike one on a good heater at 96. Boy, Delvin Young has had all kinds of problems just popping the clutch today. He stood at the plate with the bat on the shoulders uh, every at bat. Struck out in the first, walked in the third, struck out looking in the fourth. Did hit a fly ball to right field in his last at bat in the seventh inning, but he's taken a lot of very hittable strikes today. The 0 2 on the way missed outside. They've been all fast balls in this at bat. Center field for Kadome with the catch. Cubs win. Cubs sweep. They take all three in this series and finish up the road trip at four and two. Michael Hall Power with a big day. As they celebrate in the outfield, Marmel goes one, two, three in the ninth. And off day tomorrow. And then back at it on Friday.